It's a pleasure to be here to be able to share some of our progress at Avidro. As a practicing ophthalmologist here are my required financial disclosures, and relevant to this presentation I, I, is just my role at Avidro. So last May at uh, the OAS meeting in New Orleans before ASCRS, we had the privilege of announcing FDA approval of collagen crosslinking using our KXL device and the riboflavin formulations of Fotrexa and Fotrexa viscous. Since that time, on July 15th, we received a secondary indication of, of approval from the FDA for corneal ectasia following refractive surgery. We now have devices that have been shipped across the country and riboflavin that has also become available. So now we have treatments actually occurring in the US with patients as well as clinicians who have been anxiously awaiting it very excited to be able to offer treatment. So it's certainly been a very busy time at Avidro. Within the company, just to update, um, we are run by or uh, moderated by a board of directors that is very experienced in healthcare, certainly within ophthalmology. Um, we are well-funded for future growth through our lead investors, OrbiMed and Interwest, who are represented by Jonathan Silverstein and Gil Kleiman on the board. Our senior management team has significant ophthalmic experience and experience specifically from the perspective of devices and the pharma portion of our business. We have a strong leadership team from the perspective of marketing, commercialization, finance, as well as the science and regulatory areas. We're now led by Reza Zadna, who joined as CEO earlier this year. Globally, there have been over 140,000 cross-linking procedures performed. We are the market leader with, we believe, over 50% market share in each of the 60 countries in which we distribute. Outside the US, many of these treatments are done with our accelerated technology, as well as riboflavin formulations that are transepithelial. In addition to the keratoconus and ectasia treatments outside the US, treatments are combined in many situations with refractive procedures such as LASIK, PRK, or SMILE Extra. Within the US, we have our, a direct sales and service team and the only GMP formulation of riboflavin. So if we turn to the future, as Emmett mentioned earlier, what is possible with crosslinking? I would suggest thinking of it as a platform for future treatment applications. Photorefractive intrastromal crosslinking comes from an understanding that when you treat the cornea in a focal manner with crosslinking, you get a differential effect in the periphery or other areas of the cornea based on varying elasticity. So the goal is that by inducing a focal stiffening in one area, we allow the remainder of the cornea to adjust in curvature and refractive power, as you can see on the right for a demonstration of myopia and hyperopia. The device you see in the center is the mosaic crosslinking device that is CE marked. This is not available in the US nor is the formulation of riboflavin that's used in Pixel available in the US, and neither of these are in clinical trials in the US yet. Here's a demonstration quickly of a procedure performed by Professor Mazzotta in Italy where the riboflavin drops are being instilled, epithelium is on, the device is placed over the eye, this device is customizable, it can track the eye, it can import topography, and you can create any pattern uh, on the surface of the cornea. And the UV light then is applied on the surface of the eye. As you can see here, this is an accelerated pulse treatment that allows the uh, oxygen to be regenerated. So why Pixel? Why a new category of treatment for low myopia and a novel refractive procedure? If you look at data from the contact lens industry and utilization of contact lenses, it's estimated that about 7.5 million candidates for Pixel are wearing contact lenses at low levels of correction. And these are patients that generally don't consider refractive surgery, LASIK, PRK, SMILE, as a viable option because they often think of it as too invasive. So these are patients generally not seen in our offices, and they generally are patients that are comfortable with their current optical use of glasses or contacts. So let's look at the data and what can we offer potentially to these patients. Outside the US, one of the clinical trials we've performed is with per, uh, Professor Burkhard Dick's group in Germany. This is an epi-off treatment. 
low myopic patients, healthy patients, all of the parameters you see listed monitored from a safety and uh, efficacy perspective. And over a year, depending on the amount of energy applied to the cornea, we found treatment effect of about 1.4 diopters. To be a viable, non-invasive, or minimally invasive treatment, we think the treatment needs to be transepithelial. So in Singapore, we've done a pilot study, similar parameters, and demonstrated treatment effect of 0.75 diopters, certainly less than we would expect with epithelium off treatments, but that is normal in cross-linking. We have multiple trials ongoing outside the US that are transepithelial with oxygen and looking at parameters that may allow us to increase efficacy as well as refine the treatment algorithms. We also have work being done for treatment for astigmatism, hyperopic treatments that can potentially treat presbyopia, and certainly many of the patients who may be candidates for this may be those that have had prior refractive cataract surgery and need an enhancement for low level of correction. So we believe that Avidro is well positioned for ongoing success. We have the only device in the US that is FDA approved for the treatment of keratoconus and ectasia. We have the only GMP approved uh, versions of riboflavin. And outside the US, we have Pixel in development as a CE-marked, non-invasive, refractive surgical procedure. Our experience management team is operating a globally commercial enterprise that has a tremendous market opportunity. So in closing, I would welcome all of you to our educational symposium that is um, being supported by the Cornea Society. And, uh, we have a tremendous faculty of very experienced cornea specialists, many of the people who are involved in the development of crosslinking itself, corneal crosslinking in the US, what you need to know on Saturday night. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.